Welcome to the Pop on Film! I am Bunny Williams, and with me is... I am the Pope in question. My name is Reverend May Lynn. I am the founder of the Church of Ed Wood, which is an actual thing worth a Google. It is episode 452 of the podcast. Yes, yes, Little Lebowski, Urban, urban Achievers, and proud we are of all of that. Very excited to do this episode, episode 452. We are going to be talking about toys and food. We are going to be uh, continuing our look at American presidents. Bunny and I are presidential scholars. Yeah. And then this week's movie is the Canadian horror film Skinamarink. Um, can't wait for the sequel, Skinamarink 2, The Dark World. Yeah. Skin of a Rink 2 Cruise Control. Which would probably be a lot brighter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've got something special for uh, when we get to the movie and uh, a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, it is Easter. Happy Easter. Yes. Very. Uh, uh, I'm not high, you are. <laughs> going to put that out into the world right now so that everybody knows everything's fine uh so yeah let's go i'm glad i write everything down because i am already so lost we have been uh going through all of the united states presidents and doing fun facts about them it has been so fun and i can't wait for the second round so excited that it, that was so fun in our last episode. Okay, 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 week, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who got killed next to you? Oh, um. So my <laughs> my wife and I went. Amber wanted food. She was at work and she was hungry. She didn't bring any food. Amber wanted food. So we went out and bought her food and dropped it off to her. And then we just, while we're like in line at the store, uh, my wife gets a call. And apparently one of the neighbors just knocked at our door yesterday and said, uh, hey, uh, can, can I use one of your, your phone? And so uh, Mal told Emerald and Emerald came out. It's like, yeah, uh, can we use your phone to call an ambulance? Uh, someone's been shot. Yeah, apparently uh, there was a some sort of dispute next door and somebody's somebody and their cousin got into a fight and there was a there was a gunshot and someone died next door. And no so one my wife had and a I both, phone. Yeah, I, I don't know. So I don't think anyone here was questioned, but yeah, for like four hours, they shut down the street, the whole street. And uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. But my wife and I weren't here at all for it. So we had no interaction with police. It was just a, it was a. Yeah. You, yeah. And, and you guys weren't questioned. So yeah. So there was a death next door. Yeah. Yeah. So we now back to U.S. presidents. <laughs> U.S. presidents. Hooray. Uh, so, yeah. So very excited about this episode of the podcast. Let's do this. Party! Yes. I am going to talk about politics for a little bit. Right here at the top of the podcast. If that's okay of you. With you, of course, funny. Sure. Whatever. Okay. okay. Now, here's the thing, okay? It's going to seem as if I am, in fact, not talking about politics. Ah, uh, buddy, Bunford, Los Angeles, California. You'll be sitting on the couch, puff, puff, passing with yourself, and you'll think, hey, wait a minute. She's not talking about politics? Jacuse. But... Just uh, 
my unique way of storytelling is very much all the way around the world, but it's the journey, not the destination. Okay, Bonnie? Okay. Okay. Um, here's a fun fact. As of 2018, the U.S. Customs and Border people have seized over 160,000 Kinder Eggs from travelers. Okay. From travelers and international mail since 2018. Uh, so Kinder Eggs were these hollow chocolate eggs. Hello. And inside of the eggs, there were uh, uh, a plastic egg that would have a little toy inside of them. I remember having these as a very young child because they, they were available in America in the 70s and 80s before America. They, they still literally. They still are. They're just different now. But, yeah. They're just now not quite the same in America. Now you have to open them up, and there are two. There's a the Kinder Candy here, and then over here is the the toy. But they're not back in the day. The toy used to be inside of the chocolate, and you ate around the chocolate, and then you opened up the toy. But then in the eighties, America dusted off an old nineteen thirties law, saying that edible products cannot contain a non nutritive object. After a few freaking American children choked and died. Now me, I never choked and died on a Kinder Egg, at least as far as I know. So I don't see that they're a problem for me, but I haven't had one in like a decade. Okay. Well, but we have to we have to keep in consideration the stupidity of American children as compared to children in other parts of the world. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous, yes. I tells you. It's yes. upsetting. I want a Kinder Egg. I want a normal freaking Kinder Egg, but I can't get a normal freaking Kinder Egg. Okay. Yes. Let's so now, so now, some- so now, a toy is not edible, but sawdust is. Yes. Yes. Uh, thank you for coming so, to my TED Talk. So that egg can be... Fifty percent sawdust. Yeah, as long yeah. as it is toy free. Yeah, exactly. So uh, let's move on. Funny. Yes. Cabbage patch dolls. What about, they were mass. They, still- they were mass. What'd you say? Do they still exist? Yeah. Uh, they were popular in the eighties. I had one and I loved it until my older brother got angry with me, stole it and set it on fire. He I... never got in. He never got in trouble for it. And I tried my hardest to pretend like, oh yeah, whatever. I don't even care about dolls because I'm a boy. So that worked out real well for me. Yay. Trauma. <laughs> I so, I had one too, but first I was older, so this was more yeah. of a like. I loved my stuffed Ewok a lot more. The Cabbage Patch doll was more of a, a, a I guess a collectible or a novelty mm-hmm. kind of a thing. Yeah, I love my ugly doll from. Ugly Dolls of the Movie. I love it very much. Okay. Um, so by the 90s, the sales of Cabbage Patch Dolls were waning, and so they tried making a bunch of new and different Cabbage Patch Dolls. And one of them was 1995's Cabbage Patch Kid Snack Time Kid. Okay. The doll came with five, six, seven small plastic foods. And when you put the fake foods near the doll's mouth, the doll would eat the food. That toy was banned in 1997 after kids kept getting their hair caught in the chewing mechanism. Nice. So a few kids choked on Kinder Eggs, and they got rid of the Kinder Eggs, and a few kids got hurt. And now, Cabbage Patch Kids Snack Time Kid is completely banned. 
Yes. You got to get rid of it. It's hurting children. Okay, so let's move on. Funny. Fingerprints. Yes. Fingerprints. Look, if there's one thing I know about kids is that they love watching CSI. Yes. Huge, huge <coughs> show for children. So in 2007, CBS okayed licensing CSI toys for kids, including the official CSI fingerprint examination kit, which I never owned, I never bought, but when I worked at, a, at the bookstore in Norman, there was a Toys R Us next door, and they did have it on the shelf. And I would see it all the time, and I thought, oh, yeah, the show where detectives find a prostitute dismembered and skinned has a toy line. That makes sense. Welcome to America. Yes. Well, apparently, the, quote, fingerprint dusting powder in the kit contained 5% asbestos. Nice. Asbestos. When you need to be your asbest. That's my new commercial. I'm the spokesperson for asbestos. There you I'm go. I'm hoping to be. I'm going to be. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be the flow from progressive of asbestos. That, that gonna, now, 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 if you play that just right, you can work yourself into being Snow Queen. Nice. Yeah. So, um, no one was ever hurt from the official CSI fingerprint examination kit. So they found out there was asbestos in it. Nobody got hurt. But, of course, to be safe, someone could get hurt. And so the toy was banned, recalled, made illegal, gone. Bye-bye. Let's move on. Bunny, do you remember the original... 1964 original creepy crawler thing maker toy. I I can't say I exactly remember the original original because that toy goes back a way long time. But yeah. hot metal plates, mental me melted plastic. Yeah, I remember it very 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 well. I probably still have some scars. Mr. Lobo used to really piss me off. Yeah. Because uh, we would regularly watch Cinema Insomnia when we lived in, in Sacramento. And I would show it to Emerald and to Mal, and they would see these commercials, and it's like, oh, I want that toy, and I'm like, I'm not getting you Godzilla the board game. Why not? Because I don't have $500 and an eBay account. Yes. Thanks, Mr. Lobo. And they had commercials for the Creepy Crawler Thing Maker 2. And Mal really wanted a Creepy Crawler Thing Maker 2. And it's like, I can't get you one. This is from the 70s. I don't have, I don't have toy collector money. Yes. So uh, the Creepy Crawler Thing Maker came with an oven, some creepy uh, molds and bug molds and monster molds and a chemical gel that let kids make wiggly casts of their fa favorite okay. insects and no, stuff. No, 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 no. Let's break this down a little further, because you're really not getting at the essence here, okay? Okay. So what you would have is steel plates, okay? And in those plates were engraved shapes of bugs and worms and things like that. Then you would plug this plate into the electricity so that it can get hot enough to melt the plastic, what was called goop, in these steel metal plates. And then you give that to a seven-year-old to play with. Yeah. I was writing the podcast. I was that seven-year-old. <laughs> I So I'm writing the podcast, right? And uh, I write, I, I'm telling Natasha about all of these things that have been banned, food and toys and stuff. And I say that, like, yeah, it, the oven that they sold to these kids could heat up to 199 degrees Celsius. And she says, okay, no. 
And I said, yeah. Yes. She says, Celsius? Not Fahrenheit, oh, no, Celsius? No, no. And, 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 and I said, I, here, let me, let me bing it. So I get on the computer and I bing it. And so I'm like, I don't, I don't know Celsius at all. I just know Fahrenheit. So I don't know what 199 degrees Celsius is. So basically uh, twice boiling water. Yeah. So I said, so I said, uh, you know, maybe I did get it wrong. Maybe I wrote Celsius instead of Fahrenheit. No, I was right. It would heat up to 199 degrees Celsius. Oh That's like 300 God. or 400 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. It's surprising that any kid from 1964 still has fingers. That's almost as hot as a McDonald's cup of coffee. <laughs> yeah. So the oven they sold the kids could heat up to 199 degrees Celsius, and the plastic goop created toxic fumes. Oh, I didn't know about the toxic fumes. Yeah. I should have guessed. It was pretty yeah. pungent. And again, yeah. it was melting plastic. <laughs> yeah. And the plastic that could create toxic fumes. So, boom. It got banned, outlawed, made illegal, back to the drawing board. Mattel would later release Creepy Crawler Thing Maker 2 in the 70s. And that one heated up less and the plastic goop was no longer toxic uh but uh so the creepy crawler thing maker 2 was safer creepy crawler thing maker 1 it's uh fascinating that kids from the 60s aren't like dark man wrapped in all the bandages but now but now see the thing also is is that it was not just the creepy crawler thing maker is that this was a whole toy technology there yeah. were all different things that you could do with hot metal plates and melted plastic yeah uh so like I, one in particular i forget what the fuck it was called but it had it had like a a, mechan a mechanism so that like it would walk and it was just like a just a mechanism with like feet and then from there you can do something like the thing maker with melted plastic and make like different heads and different bodies of monsters to put on this walking thing hmm just as I... another example, but it was the same thing. It was hot metal electric plates and melted plastic. Buddy, do you see how good I look right now? Holy crap. I look so good. <laughs> Woo -hoo! Um, okay, so... Uh, they released the Creepy Crawler Thing Maker 2 in the 70s. And while we're on the subject, in 1979, Kenner Toys announced that they were starting work on a Boba Fett action figure. Yes. Boba Fett. You know, you know from the uh, legendary film, the Star Wars holiday special. Yes. Uh... And so this Boba Fett action figure would have a, a jetpack and then it would have a toy rocket on the jetpack and you would press the little thing and the toy rocket would shoot out. Achoo! And so they started making some prototypes of the Boba Fett. And uh, it, apparently Kenner deemed the toy a choking hazard. And so they only made a few prototypes that now sell for hundreds of thousands of dollars. They didn't even release the Boba Fett action figure with the rocket that shot out. No. I, I want to hit cast Boba Fett action figure with a little rocket on its back, and then you press the thing, and then it goes, pachoo! I want, I want a Boba Fett that goes, pachoo! Everyone, uh, everyone deserves a little Boba Fett that goes, pachoo! Oh, yes. Oh, are we planning our shit not gun yeah yeah all the stuff that's oh. the that's the like 
a surprise twist at the end. I'm still going through all the things. I haven't Fuck, done spoilers. You had it. Spoiled the you end it. of the. I didn't know where you were. You spoiled the end of our of my monologue. I don't watch it. Yeah, you did give me the idea, so that's okay. okay. Yeah, uh, okay, because we just totally did not know where this was going at all. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely right. Yeah. You think you're the first idiot? <clears throat> Stop it. <laughs> uh, and, and finally, Bunny, I grew up going to a very strict private Catholic school. Uh, and not all of my classmates, but most of my classmates, a number of my classmates, they had money. Yeah. They had money. There were a few of us, like me and um, uh, Heath Mosier and maybe Michael Waldron. Our parents were struggling to get by and hardly had any money. But, but then there were other people who had money i'd stay over at like aaron diaz's house and we'd be uh having a sleepover on, on, on like the third floor of his house and it's like i just have the one floor <laughs> that was always weird going to a, a house of a kid who had stairs yes stairs. and then it's like the 80s and so like every fourth house had a conversation pit in yes. the live in the living room, like oh here you go here you go, and now take the stairs down to the living room pod. Yeah, hey, right. And we and we wouldn't have stairs, and then we would get a slinky, and it'd be like, what do we do with this? Oh, yeah, what are we supposed to do with this? Yeah. So, uh, you've never been in a house with stairs? Mm -hmm. Yes, you have, because my parents have stairs, but you yeah, just don't remember don't that you were too young. Yeah. Oh, my parents are bitch ass motherfuckers. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. I, I, I'm not, I'm not arguing with that. But like, I'd go to Matt Fendon's house, and he'd have a big grand piano in his living room. Yeah, like it's Matt. Matt Fendon's dad was Liberace or something, and I'd go to somebody else's house. I'd be in Scottsdale, Scottsdale. I don't got Scottsdale money. All the, like you have a grand piano in your house. All I have is an eight track player and Julio Iglesias tapes. That's all I have. Julio Iglesias on eight track and a beta tape player. I I don't really remember any of my friends having money. I just remember as a kid walking into a house that was exceptionally clean and getting really nervous and anxious. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get that. In the 80s, one third of all houses had a one bathroom that was beach themed. You go to some friend's house and there's seashells and like yeah. a lobster. Yeah. Yeah, I, that just top of my head. I once went to Aurelia's house in eighth grade for a party once. And no offense to Aurelia. She's super cool and supportive of Mei Lin. She's an ally. and Love her. She's awesome. But I swear that house was in a state off of Central Avenue right near downtown Phoenix. I swear to you. That... That party was catered. Oh, wow. I remember White Mike Waldron and I, we were both uh, from homes where we struggled with money. So while the rest of the party was walking around the posh neighborhood, uh, Mike and I stayed in the garage just pigging out at food like madmen, Bunny, just shoveling, you know? Yes. Mike Waldron was one of the popular kids. Uh but him and I were also became very close friends because, you know, the popular kids in the 80s, they just want to go ride their bikes and then go to the park and then throw the football around. But I was like the only friend of Mike Waldron's that would say, you want to play Nintendo? And that was like enough for a friendship. Yeah. Of just staying up and playing Super Mario 3. 
So uh, it, we're just eating a bunch of food at Aurelia's house, just shoveling it in. And so, so okay, so this is what I'm getting at, Bunny. Uh, uh, so one thing from childhood that I remember being the height of luxury, jarts. 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 A.K.A. Friggin' long lawn darts, bunny. Yes. Lawn darts. I don't know where the jart came from. Jousting darts. Oh. I, I have no idea. I have no idea <laughs> where it came from. I, I just... I, I, I will I just came that. out of my head. Oh. Yeah. But long darts. They, like, like... You're at like a friend's house and it's like, oh, you want to go play lawn darts, lawn darts in the backyard? And it's like, yo, y'all, y'all can afford lawn darts. OK, yo, you guys, you guys have got money. So, Bunny, we've been talking about banned American products, toys, food, lawn related games, etc. That were deemed too dangerous and were banned. Yes. Meanwhile, every year, more than 3,500 children and teens are shot and killed uh, in the United States, and another 15,000 are wounded in shootings. That's according to the CDC. In 2020 alone, over 4,300 young Americans died of firearm-related injuries, and in 2022, that number skyrocketed to over 6,000 kids killed or injured. Uh, guns are dangerous, and they are regularly killing children. But Republicans and pro-life rep pro Republicans at that, um, they don't think that guns should be banned. Oh, really? So I can't make, I can't own the official CSI fingerprint investigation kit because a child may get hurt. But kids are being killed with guns. And your plan is, what, give them more? Yes. Like, what the heck? We, we are in the absolute worst world. Oh, you can't have, you can't have a Kinder Egg. Those are too dangerous. But well, we're not going to do anything to stop mass shootings in schools. Yes. But let's give the teachers who are just grooming your children to be homosexual and trans, let's give them guns. Yes, I know that I won't rest until every home economics teacher has the Gatling gun. Jesse Ventura used it, Predator. Yes, they would not be able to teach you how to make a devil's food cake because that would be controversial, but they can have a gun. If the Americans are too stupid to an egg, before eating it, maybe they shouldn't have all the guns. Ten minute warning. Okay. Uh, honey, while you're here, would you like to try some of these lightly salted potato no. chips? No. I like them. Mouth thinks that they are gross. What are you doing? Uh, some Republican sheep and a bald head and no neck told me, told me, uh, he told me recently online that, well, you can't ban guns because criminals will get their hands on them anyway. And it's like, hey, why don't you get that idiotic Republican nonsense that passes for logic and use that same flimsy, flimsy excuse on other things like weed, on mushrooms, on same-sex marriage, on friggin' abortion. Republicans want to ban books, education, voting rights, gay marriage, the existence of trans people. They want to ban everything, but the things, except for the things that are act actively killing our children. So, Bonnie, yeah. um, this whole thing has been a way to introduce everyone to my new advocacy group. <clears throat> it, it, it's we're going to be a lobbying group similar to the NRA, I'm calling it, and I made you a graphic. Do you have the graphic, Bunny? A graphic? 
Yeah, I no. sent it to your uh, message. Oh, no, I said it's okay if you if you can't put it up right now. But I came up with a graphic. I told you that the entire monologue was based on this graphic. It's cool. I have. I'm. <laughs> I'm starting. I'm starting a new organization. It is called the NLDA, the National Lawn Dart Association, because kids deserve to grow up in an America where you get a little Boba Fett action figure with a little rocket that goes pew. Yes. If everyone deserves a kick-ass Boba Fett action figure. You mean to tell me that guns can't get banned, but I legally can no longer play lawn darts? I want to throw big sharp things at the lawn near my children. Yes. Preferably so near be, your children. We're going to be in D.C. lobbying for lawn darts. Lobbying to bring back the creepy crawler with toxicity. Have you have you worked on your any of your lawn dart related chants? I don't there haven't been any. This is this is our time. Well, that's right. why you have to come up with one. Yeah. Yeah. Long darts are going to be the next big. You mean to tell me that long darts are dead, but somehow the XFL is back again, again? Is it back again? Uh, the Rock is rebooting it. The uh. Rock, the Rock bought, bought the rights of the XFL from Vince McMahon. I haven't seen a uh, I haven't seen a fight like this since Michael Jackson bought all of the Beatles songs. Really? Yeah. So uh, we're gonna bring back Kinder Eggs, the Thing Maker, the doll that wants to eat hair, uh, the cool Boba Fett with the rocket that goes. Pew! We're gonna bring it all back. Lawn darts or the Hey, there it is. Yay, you got it working. The National Lawn Dart Association. I There aren't a lot of uh, uh, graphics. There's not a lot of lawn dart clip art. No. There is because, not. Because <coughs> lawn darts haven't been a thing. But it's not like uh, uh, government officials are going door to door taking your lawn darts. So they banned it in the eight. They stopped selling it in the eighties, but a lot of people just kept them. And so throughout the nineties and two thousands, people still had lawn darts, even though they have been banned and they stopped making them. So this was the closest I could get for my logo for the NLDA, the NOLDA. And, and it's, it's but it just like gives you that, that like, like slightly criminal feel. Because you know you yeah. have lawn darts, you know yeah. you have you have lawn darts in the garage, and you know they're illegal, and you're just like, ha, fucking anarchy, motherfucker. That's exactly why I have a little bag of black heart part heroin. Fuck you! I won't do what you tell me. And then you throw a lawn dart. Yeah. Ooh, forty points. So everybody, uh. It, I, I'm excited to get that uh, uh, advocacy group donation money. Oh, that's where it's at. Yeah. Yeah. So, hey, if you want to fight for America's freedoms, all you patriots out there, send me money to that will help me in my fight to get lawn darts back. That's that's the plan. If you're not going to ban guns, I should be able to throw darts at my kids. Yes. Simple as that. So be sure and donate now to the National yeah. Lawn Dart Association. They'll live everyone... most likely. Huh? I said they'll live most likely. Yeah. Yeah. Because everyone deserves a Boba Fett action figure with a kick-ass rocket launcher on its good tech that goes And that's our slogan. You got to add the pachoo. So that's it for the monologue this week. We are going to be taking a short break because I've been losing my voice. Have you noticed, Bunny? 
Yes. I, it, I okay. I like to think that 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 uh, I've. I, uh, what's the name of that one New York actress from the slums of Beverly Hills and Natasha Leone? Like to think I've got a Natasha Leone thing going on with uh-huh. my voice. Uh, so we're gonna take a short break because we do this on Zoom, and uh, there's a forty minute time limit. So we are going to take a short break, and when we come back, we are going to continue our discussion of American history with American presidents. So we will be right back with more of the Popon film after this. Do 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 do. 